Kenny Omega and Hangman Page lose the Tag Team Championships. Former WWE star Matt Seidel debuts to immediately botch his first move, and unfortunately, in a far scarier botch, Matt Hardy is taken to hospital following a table bump gone wrong, with AEW facing major criticism for allowing him to finish his match. I'm Ollie Davis, the inaugural Wrestle Talk Jam That Champion. Can I get a no thank you for lukewarm Luke Owen? And this is AEW All Out 2020 reviewed in about 10 minutes. Joey Janela beat Sir Pentico in a stand-up match, and the Dark Order's Alex Reynolds and John Silver were absolutely fantastic, losing to Private Party on the pre-show. If Reynolds and Silver continue this level of work, AEW should start to push them beyond Mr. Brody Lee's comedy foils. The main card opened with the tooth and nail cinematic match of Big Swole versus Britt Baker. This was originally scheduled for the pre-show, but according to WrestleTalk.com's own Louis Dangor, exclusively reporting, because we do exclusive exclusives now, don't you know? It was moved to the main card because of the Twitter backlash and also because management were really impressed with how the short film turned out. Comedy cinematic matches aren't for everyone, but I thought this captured the best of WWE's money in the bank zaniness based around demented dentist Baker beating Swole up around her practice with standard dentistry tools like handheld drills. I already don't like going to the dentist, don't give me any more phobias. Oh god damn it, there's a needle. Baker tried to inject Swole with anaesthetic, but Swole reversed it right into Brit's leg, meaning her limb went numb Johnny English style. Swole won by gassing Brit out. I guess we can say she won with the go to sleep. The Young Bucks and Jurassic Express then put on my third favourite match of the night. With incredibly innovative spots, Matt and Nick's continued turn to the dark side and getting Jungle Boy over huge in defeat, who kicked out of multiple superkick attacks at the end. The fun continued with AEW's annual Don't Call It The Royal Rumble Casino Battle Royale match, with a much better structure of everyone getting individual entrances. As expected, the action was mostly based around faction warfare through Team FTW, Eddie Kingston's Death Pentagon, and Lance Archer, because Lance Archer is his own faction. We had big hoss battles, a great showing from AEW's very promising developing big guy Luke Hobbs, and even the debut of WWE's former Evan Bourne Matt Seidel, master of the shooting star press, who went to hit his most famous move as soon as he entered, but slipped and crashed to the mat Shockmaster style. It is both, in equal measures, sad and incredibly funny. Apparently the humidity in Daly's place was a big problem throughout the show, making the ropes all tight as well slide. But as funny as it was, Seidel's botch also marks the point that the night started to turn. Ricky Starks and Brian Cage eliminated Darby Allen by putting him in a body bag full of thumbtacks and then dumped him over the top rope. The execution appeared reckless, with Darby seemingly landing unprotected on his head and doctors attending to him for the rest of the match. Reportedly, he's thankfully okay. Archer eventually threw Eddie Kingston off the apron to get a future AEW title shot. After these very exciting opening matches, the crowd energy then began to wane. Firstly because of the reported heat, and then because of what happened in Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. In just the second spot of the match, Guevara speared Hardy off the top of an elevated platform, missing one of the two merch tables meant to break their fall, causing the back of Matt's head to sickenly thud against the concrete from an eight-foot drop. Immediately, something felt wrong. Matt wasn't moving, and referee Aubrey Edwards threw up the X. Doctors rightfully decided to call off the match to prioritize wrestler safety, until they let it restart moments later. Despite being unable to stand just several minutes previously, appearing genuinely unconscious, AEW's Dr. Sampson cleared Hardy to continue. They rushed to the finish, letting Matt climb up the stage structure, an incredibly irresponsible spot considering the state he was in, so Sammy could fall off and lose via the 10 count. Brian Alvarez revealed Hardy was sent to hospital afterwards, criticizing Dr. Sampson for allowing him to continue, while Matt's wife, Rebby Sky, tweeted, let me be absolutely F***ing clear, there is nothing entertaining about a concussion. Shame on everyone in that goddamn building. 
Tony Khan tried to explain what happened on the post-show media scrum, saying that Matt is okay and he's going to be okay. When the doctor checked him, he passed him and cleared him on the concussion protocol. That's why the doctor cleared him to continue. His trip to the hospital was apparently just a precaution. Ryan Satin is reporting the bump was ran through twice prior to tonight's show, one of which included an insured stump person supervising. Even if Matt had passed the concussion protocol, continuing the match dampened an already fatigued crowd and the pay-per-view never fully recovered. What do you think about the Matt Hardy injury? Let me know in the comments down below because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere. In a testament to Shida and Thunder Rosa though, some are calling theirs match of the night despite lacking that crowd atmosphere. Rosa took about 70% of the offense, coming off supremely confident and threatening, even kicking out of Shida's falcon arrow at one. Ultimately, Shida retained with a running knee. AEW need to do everything possible to make Thunder Rosa a permanent part of their roster. Following the release, of their faction mate, Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford got a soft reset, announcing they'll be having their wedding on Dynamite soon. I'm sure nothing will go wrong with a wedding on a wrestling show. Dustin Rhodes managed to sneak roll up on Colt Cabana in the Dark Order versus Nightmare Family, Matt Cardona and Scorpio Sky eight-man tag. It was decent enough and had some great character work from Cabana, Mr. Brody Lee and Evil Uno in the post-match, but this should have just been on Dynamite to cut back on the show's four-hour runtime. And it also might have prevented JR momentarily thinking it was 1999 again, saying, did Anna J just have a wardrobe malfunction? Or is that wishful thinking in my book? It's okay though, he apologized on Twitter. Didn't mean to offend anyone on the wardrobe malfunction line. Weak attempt at humour. Sorry. Now lighten up. Tongue out smiling face emoji. Ah yes, the tongue out smiling face emoji. The true mark of a repentant man. Trying their best to make a wrestling show about wrestling again, Kenny Omega, Hangman Page and FTR reminded us that AEW has the best storyline in all of wrestling going on right now. Kenny and Paige would wrestle FTR singly, while FTR always functioned as a tag team unit. It meant Omega and Hangman were frequently cut off from one another, letting Dax and Cash grind them down. A great physical representation of the age-old question, what's better, two singles guys or a great tag team? This match might not have had the near falls of the Revolution match, but it almost rivaled it for drama in the final third. Kenny ducked an accidental lariat from Paige, but Hangman got hit by Omega's knee. That was that actual last call, as FTR's momentum reached a critical mass. All Kenny and Paige could do was reach out for each other as Dax and Cash hit two pile drivers to win. FTR, your new AEW Tag Team Champions. And then the post-match was just as good. Paige went to embrace Kenny, but Omega just let him collapse on the floor. Kenny stormed out the heel entrance, screaming at the Bucks that him and Hangman are done, and he's going to go back to the way things were, teasing the long-awaited heel cleaner gimmick from New Japan. You don't need a big heel turn, you don't need a big reveal. The Elite story has always been subtle, understated, and driven by character rather than by plot. This was fantastic. And in a complete change of pace, Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy then tried to throw each other into giant vats of mimosa. Starting off hot with Cassidy running straight into a code breaker, the two might have had the best of their trilogy so far, mainly built around both men dangling or balancing near the pool of orange liquid. Cassidy rightfully won with two Superman punches, sending Jericho back flopping into the vat for an incredibly satisfying payoff. And the main event saw MJF versus John Moxley versus this guy in the crowd who tried to give Mox a high five. And fittingly for a main event title match, both men brought it, told an excellent story, and had my match of the night. The dramatic conflict was perfectly already established in the build. Anything outside the ring gives Mox the advantage, anything inside it plays to MJF's wrestling ability. So the story was all about trying to lure your opponent onto home turf. Add on to that Moxley not being allowed to hit his paradigm shift and some excellent selling of his arm, it created multiple layers of psychology. Crucially though, as well as being a fantastic match, this accomplished something even more important long term. Elevating humorous chicken S-word heel MJF to a credible main event 
threat. The blood trickling down his face and his spit in Moxley's eye earned respect. The final third was absolutely thrilling and the finish was one of the best I've seen in months. Wardlow distracted the referee and threw in the diamond ring. MJF was about to use it but seeing he was going to cheat, Mox decided to be the better cheater, hitting the band paradigm shift to win. So that was AEW All Out 2020 in about 10 minutes. Let me know what you thought of the show in the comments down below. It's weird to come out of a show I enjoyed so much with the fantastic finish of the main event, Paige and Omega's heartbreaking split, and general in-ring fun, yet it all feels overshadowed by Hardy's injury, the lacklustre crowd, and the four-hour show length. Five with the pre-show, which WWE have finally learned is far too long. And because of that, despite this pay-per-view having some of my favourite moments of the year, by AEW standards, it's a three out of five. But it all served a larger purpose here at WrestleTalk. I am your inaugural Jam That Champion, and lukewarm Luke Owen is finally gone from this channel. I couldn't have done it, of course, without my new Ollie Thority member. Mr. Chopper, realising what you, the fans, want and giving me all his prediction points to break the tie. Chopper will explain all in tomorrow's WrestleTalk news. So support us and subscribe. WWE stars are reportedly livid with Vince McMahon backstage. Find out why by clicking the video on the right. And Bailey has finally turned on Sasha Banks. Click the video below that for our Smackdown Review podcast. I've been Mr. Davis. Your jam that champion.